Hello, everybody. It's so good to have contact with you again, although in a, obviously a different format. I just want you to know that I have missed you so much. You had become an integral part of my life, and I did truly miss that. Our weekly video entitled Senior Moments with Donna, that's me, <laughs> will temporarily replace those wonderful programs that were provided to you in the past by your library. Hopefully your spirits, spirits will be lifted as you watch the presentation, which by the way, will follow the same pattern as those programs. It is very important to be optimistic during these troubling times. As usual, this will be reflected in our thought for the week. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. Make it a happy day. Now, as I was getting ready for today's event, I thought of a man by the name of George Orwell. George Orwell was a very famous author. And in 1949, he wrote a book entitled 1984. Now, the contents of his book, obviously, were figments of his imagination. And when 1984 rolled around, obviously, there were many, many things. In fact, practically everything that was not real. So I got to thinking, it's the year 2000, and I'm going to write a book. And I'm going to entitle it 2020. What am I going to put in this book? Well, one thing's for sure, whatever I come up with in my imagination to put in my book will in no way remotely resemble reality, okay? Whoever would have thought that this would be an integral part of my wardrobe, okay? Now I'm telling you this for one reason and one reason only, and that is we do not know what the future has in store for us and we never will. And quite frankly, I consider that to be a blessing. I don't wanna know what's going to happen to me, to me next week, next year, 10 years, I do not want to know. But there is something that we can control. We can control our attitude. We have the choice to be happy or to be sad. Thus, our thought for the day, today is the first day of the rest of your life. Make it a happy day. Okay, one of the major goals of this program will be to make you laugh. Humor is so important in our daily lives. In fact, it keeps us young. Okay. Today's humor is based on four successful, competitive young men. They are brothers. And the love that they have for their mother. As, and it is entitled, Mama's Bible. Four brothers left home for college and they became successful doctors and lawyers. And they prospered. Some years later, they chatted after having dinner together. They discussed the gifts they were able to give their elderly mother who lived far away in another city. The first said, I had a big house built for mama. The second said, I had a $100,000 theater put into this house. The third said, I had a Mercedes dealer deliver a SL600 to her. The fourth said, well, you know how mama loved reading the Bible and how she can't read anymore because she can't see very well. I met with this preacher who told me about a parrot that can recite the entire Bible. It took 20 preachers 12 years to teach him. I had to pledge to contribute $100,000 a year for 20 years to the church, but it was worth it. Mama just has to name the chapter and verse and the parrot will recite it. 
Oh, the other brothers were very impressed. After the holidays, Mama sent out her thank you notes. Milton, the house you built is so huge. I live in only one room, but I have to clean the whole thing. Thanks anyway. Marvin, I am too young to travel. I stay home and I have my groceries delivered, so I never use the Mercedes. However, the thought was nice. Michael, the theater could hold 50 people, but all my friends are dead. I've just lost my hearing and I'm nearly blind. I'll never use it, but thank you for the thought just the same. Dearest Marvin, you are the only son to have the good sense to give a little thought to your gift. The chicken was delicious. Huh. Thank you so very much. Okay, that was our humor for today. All right, uh, another fun segment from previous programs presented us with the origins of popular expressions that we have heard and used all of our lives. For example, it's raining cats and dogs. We've heard that many, many times. Have we ever stopped to think, well, where in the world did that come from? Okay, I'm going to tell you. Years and years ago, houses had thatched roofs with thick straw piled, straw piled high and no wood underneath. It was the only place for animals to get warm. So all the cats and dogs and other small animals, including mice and bugs, lived in the roof. When it rained, the animals would slip and fall off the roof. Hence the saying, it's raining cats and dogs. This posed a real problem in the bedroom where bugs and other droppings could mess up your nice clean bed. Thus a bed with big posts and a sheet hung over the top afforded some protection. That's how canopy beds came into existence. Okay. And finally, who am I? I will give you five clues regarding the life of a very popular entertainer of our era. Your job will be to guess the name of the famous person. You might want to write down the name you have selected and the clue number that gave you your answer. Ready? Clue number one. She was born on February 27, 1932 in London, England. Her American parents were both art teachers or art dealers. Soon after the outbreak of World War II, they returned to the United States and settled into their new life in Los Angeles. Clue number two. At the age of three, three, she started dancing and eventually gave a recital for Princesses Elizabeth and Margaret. She signed a contract with Universal Studios and made her debut at the age of 10 in the movie, There's One Born Every Minute. She followed that up with a bigger role in the 1945, excuse me, 1943 movie, Lassie Come Home. Number three, her breakout role, however, came in 1944 with the movie National Velvet. The film turned out to be a huge success that earned more than $4 million. Can you imagine in 1944, $4 million, what that would be equal to today? And this made the 12 year old actress a huge star. With her stunning looks, she played opposite Spencer Tracy in the movie, Father of the Bride at the age of 18. Number four. Her personal life only boosted the success of her films. For a time, she dated millionaire Howard Hughes. Then at the age of 17, she married hotel heir Nikki Hilton. After her divorce, at the age of 20, she married Michael Welding. She was married eight times, twice to Richard Burton. And finally, 
She garnered starring roles in A Place in the Sun, Giant, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, and Suddenly Last Summer. She won her first Oscar for Best Actress in Butterfield 8. She died of congestive heart failure in 2011 at the age of 79. Who am I? Are you ready? Elizabeth Taylor. Elizabeth Taylor. All right, in conclusion, I hope that you have enjoyed our little get together. I would really like to hear from you. Feel free to send me a message containing your thoughts about this program. Stay tuned. More is yet to come. Thank you again. And remember to keep smiling. <laughs>